this car and this design that I, I applied to it really reflects and celebrates a time when we were technically not really aware of what we were doing. There's an old saying that if you remember the 70s, you wasn't there. I thought a lot about the, the shape of the imagery, where it was going to take place, and it's, it's obviously two arrows, which has a lot of reference to the graffiti culture, which is about arrows bringing attention to yourself. But these two arrows are crossing over, and it's a crossover vehicle. So here we have the crossover of different cultures, particularly underground culture, the visual arts, music, fashion, it all came together in places like CBGBs. And then we go into the, you know, the classic, the whole nightlife of New York, club life, people like you know, Madonna, wanted to hang out and see the flavor of the city, the art, the, you know, the striking the pose. And it was places like that, like the Roxy, that was very instrumental in bringing all those forces together. And she's representing fashion with the iconic sculpture of Fashion Avenue. Fashion contributes to music, music contributes to fashion, the arts ties it all together. So here we have it. Here's the front pinnacle peak of the piece. Right now, as I see it on the car, this cat right here is a broke stockbroker is trying to navigate between this sea of lions over here. I call them yellow lions. I, I see it like the way it's parting the Red Sea, the big sea, you know, the sea of controversy, you know? The subway, New York City subway as we love it, as I love it, from that and the lights and the blemish and then bam, the F representing, you know, the rapidism of two million people moving in and out of every sector of the city within an hour and a half in the morning and in the afternoon. And of course, the iconic, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge that I grew up in the shadows of. I know a lot about this bridge. When people look at your sneakers nowadays, they don't look at your Prada bags anymore. So the same thing with, with tires and, and rims on cars. They look at the, they don't even look at the vehicle hardly anymore. They look at the rims and tires. I had spoken to Gene about doing something like this a while back with the tire and rim combination. So I wanted to come up with something that had some kind of legibility to it, had a graffiti flavor. So Michelin, you know, loved the idea. They were like, okay, let's do this. I spent more money on tape than on paint on this project. Tapes that don't stick to the paint really hard. Tapes that come off really easy. They can stay on the car for 14 days, 60 days. You gotta know what you're doing, you know. There's a lot of, it's a huge process. When you're looking at this paint, there's a lot of trickery that I won't let off on camera, but there's a lot of layers of paint on this. To get all these fine lines and all that, it's a lot of like high-end and low-tech trickery. I would say the real true artwork that's on top of this is the finishing work done by Ricky Maldonado made this thing come alive. But now you can see it from every angle just based on that work, and that was very labor intensive. So here we are with two artists, and we both embrace both of our talents and just splitting atoms. So it's a process on top of a process on top of a process. So in Vegas, 